So the what we're going to do is basically just go through how the WEAI is, is calculated. And I think the best thing, if you don't mind, is to try to go through it in one goal, in, in one step, um, to save time. And if there are questions, then we'll take them all at the end. And how Anavaj and I have divided it is that uh, first we'll just review conceptually how the index itself is calculated and showing you a little bit of the different definition of variables. And then Anna will take you through the do files. And we will try to do that in an efficient way, which uh, um, allows some time for questions. So um, this is very much a detailed presentation. And I'm trusting that people know the motivation, the importance of women's empowerment, primarily women's empowerment in agriculture sec next, and of the women's empowerment in agriculture index. So I'm not going to go through any of that. I'm going to presume previous knowledge and simply go into how the Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index, or WEAI, is constructed. So from a backroom perspective, we make two indices. One is called the 5DE, for five domains of empowerment, and the other is called the GPI, or Gender Parity Index. Um, the 5DE is based on the M0, the Alkaya Foster methodology, and the GPI is based on the poverty gap of the foster Beer thorbeck class of measures. Both um, indices range from 0 to 1. Um, in the case of both, higher values mean greater empowerment. And the index, the final index, is a weighted sum of these two. But because all of the energy is in the two and all of the information is in the two, the WAI AI overall value doesn't have meaning, but it's the individual sub-indices that have meaning. So start with the first one conceptually. The 5DE um, reflects, like any other uh, M0 measure in the class, uh, both the incidence of empowerment and, in a sense, the intensity, we would say, of poverty. But now we are going to focus on the positive. And so what you will notice is in a poverty measure, we look at the headcount or the incidence of poverty, the incidence of disempowerment. But framed as positive, it's the incidence of empowerment. And I'll go through that again. Also, in poverty, we would look at the intensity of deprivations among the poor, the weighted sum on average of deprivations poor people experience. Now we are looking at one minus that. That is the adequacy that people who are poor, or in this case disempowered, what uh, indicators they nonetheless have sufficiency in. So like any other, it's based on each women's empowerment profile. It identifies who is empowered and how women are disempowered. So the 5DE methodology only covers women. It doesn't cover men. It covers all women, whether they are from female-only households or from married households. The first step in constructing the index is to create an empowerment score for each woman. And that has five domains and ten indicators. And the woman is uh, graded as having sufficiency or insufficiency in each indicator, adequacy or inadequacy in each indicator. Um, and the weights are nested with each of the five domains having equal weights and the indicators on the rest having equal weights. So you can see that control of income has the highest weight at one-fifth, and the resources variables have one-fifteenth of the weight, and the others have one-tenth each. So there are 10 indicators covering five domains. Sabina, can I make just a small question? Um, yeah. Uh, are you sharing the screen? Because I, I, I can't see it either. Exactly. I can see it, but I don't think you're sharing the screen. Okay. Because I, I have my presentation, but I don't see it in the, in the screen of, oh, of the sky. Okay, that's a good question. Um, I think we should stay here. Is this working? Yes. yes. Okay. No, yes. Thank you. Okay, so I'll keep my eye on that spot okay. here. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, and the next is having created empowerment scores for each person, how do, we, how do we know if they have achieved adequacy? And the cutoff is they have to have adequacy in 80% or more of the weighted indicators. 
So how does this fit um, in what we'll be looking at? First of all, adequacy is the word we use as the opposite of deprivation. So a person is deprived in dimension J if their score in J is strictly less than the deprivation cutoff. And a person therefore has adequacy in J if their score in J, in, in, in that particular indicator, is greater than or equal to the cutoff. And so for each of the 10 indicators, we have the cutoff Z sub J, and we evaluate women to obtain their empowerment score from it. And so it looks at the empowerment score is the weighted sum of deprivations or dimensions in which a person has adequacy. And the empowerment score is one minus the sensor deprivation score. So um, in the do file that you'll see, we construct the sensor deprivation score. And then if you want the empowerment score, it's simply conceptually one minus. And so a person is empowered if their empowerment score is greater than 80%. But in the do file, you'll notice that we call the poverty cutoff K. Unfortunately, the do file has the notation of X, but you'll uh, interpret that as K. And so if K is 20% and is a strict poverty cutoff, then the person um, is disempowered, um, sorry, is empowered. Um, if, if their uh, deprivations are less than 20%, and if their deprivations are greater than 20%, then they are um, empower disempowered. Did I say that the right way around? Yeah. Um, so when we actually do the methodology, although for the 5DE we are going to report women's empowerment, when we construct the gender parity index, we are going to construct it for women and for men. And so when we run the data, we actually construct it for women and men together, but the 5DE only reports women's uh, empowerment, the percentage of women who are empowered, and the average sufficiency they enjoy. Um, and so this is a, just a little reminder of the steps. So that's pretty straightforward and um, should just be a re review of what is already known. Similarly, in constructing the gender parity index, um, which is b based on a poverty gap measure, it first identifies women who enjoy gender parity. And we define this in the following way. A woman enjoys gender parity if she is empowered, so her empowerment score is greater than or equal to 80%. Her deprivation score is strictly less than 20%. And we in, uh, identify her as enjoying gender parity if her empowerment score is equal than or greater than that of the primary male in her household. So if she's disempowered but still more empowered than the male in her household, she enjoys gender parity or if they have equal empowerment. If she is, does not enjoy gender parity, then we measure the empowerment gap. And that's the average percentage shortfall that a woman without parity experiences relative to the male in her household. So the construction is only based on households that have men and women. We exclude female-only households. It also requires, as I mentioned, the empowerment scores of a man and a woman for each household. Um, and so that's why we, we construct them for the man and the woman. We gather the same data for the man and the woman. Um, and the, because of this, the denominators change. So you have to keep an eye on denominators as you're constructing the gender parity index. The denominator is now not all people in all households, but only households that have a man and a woman. Um, and so this is a little bit more formally. The unit is the woman in a household with a relative male. You construct using the sensor deprivation scores, um, but I've just framed it for the intuition in terms of the empowerment scores. Um, as you'll see, in both the 5DE and the GPI, it's one minus a well-known poverty measure. In the first case, a multidimensional one. In the second case, a unidimensional one. And they are rewritten simply algebraically in a more positive way. Um, so you can also interpret the 5DE not as one minus a disempowerment measure, but also as the percentage of women who are empowered plus the product of the percentage of women who are not empowered times the average um, empowerment score that disempowered women enjoy. 
And so it's, mathematically it comes out to the same, but it's a more positive way of framing it. And similarly for the GPI. And so this is simply for the purpose of communication. It doesn't affect indicator construction, but if you are also responsible for interpreting the indicators, not just constructing them, then this will um, affect how you'll present the results because they'll be presented in a different way than normal poverty results. So now we're moving to um, the uh, more hands-on part. So that's just to remind everybody as, of what the two indices are that we'll be calculating. So we're going to assume at this moment that you have received cleaned survey data that includes the, the Women's Empowerment Index survey. We're going to assume that the survey was implemented correctly and that the survey therefore uses the variable names which are in the surveys that are on the website. And those are the same variable names that are in the do files that will demonstrate. And we're also presuming sort of background familiarity, um, getting to know the data set, constructing, you know, making sure that the quality checks and the data cleaning have been well done. But also before you get to, you know, in, in familiarizing your set self with the data set, you might want to look at a few particular issues. One is non-response. The way, as you will see in a moment, the indicators are constructed is that you have one question which has to apply for herding communities, people who grow cash crops, people who have kitchen gardens, people who run fisheries, um, so a wide variety of agricultural activities. And so you have to check non-response to make sure that um, uh, at least some domains or categories have responses. And you'll have to check them across questions um, that are distinct but related because you'll be aggregating them into indicators. So you'll have to look at the set of questions that you'll be aggregating and look at non-response or else run, run the indicator section, the data, the, the indicator construction um, data prep file and then look at your non-responses. Um, and you also will want for purposes of analysis to check what percentage of responses, respondents are not engaged in agricultural activities of any kind and those who are because the survey will be representative. So it will pick up respondents who are merchants who live in cities um, or small communities and these people will look disempowered but it's because they have zero probability of being empowered because they sell sewing machines. So you need to know that in order to accurately interpret the data at the end and again think about the denominator. And you'll also want to check the percentage of female only households. Some places oversample them, the sampling weights should correct for that. But you'll want to have a sense of what proportion of your population are female only. The next is not necessary um, unless you're going to do a specific gender analysis um, in, a, in addition to simply constructing the indices. But I left in a slide that um, Greg Seymour, a doctoral student, did with a pilot studies which looked at the mismatch between women and men's responses to the same question of who made decisions in their household. And in the three pilot studies in Bangladesh, Uganda, and Guatemala, he found that women and men from the same household asked the same question on the same day unambiguously contradicted each other in just over a quarter of cases. And so that may or may not vary by, by area, but if you are doing a gendered analysis, you'll really want to know also um, the, the degree of agreement and disagreement between women and men about the fact of the matter, like who decides when to take a crop to market or how much to sell it for. A number of the indices, indeed eight of them, um, require construction of sub-indices. And um, it can be very useful to do validity checking. And I know that some people have asked about that. So for example, for the three autonomy indicators, um, a correlation analysis for all of the domains A through E of the G03 variables and the G04 variables um, is expected to be greater than zero, and these are, the others are expected to be less. Um, and also, as Anna has indicated, um, doing exploratory factor analysis um, is very useful in, again, validating whether the different indicators of decision making converge to the same factors. We used EFA in preparing the index. Of course, this will differ for different data sets. It's simply a 
a statistical test, but it's often done before creating um, sub-indices of the kind that we have. And Anna, I don't know, when I'm finished in just one or two slides, you may want to say more about that. Um, yeah, so in terms of the indicator construction, you need to check the data that the variable names and labels are correct, um, and they correspond to the correct survey questions and answer codes. And what you'll notice in the last three slides is that eight of the ten indicators um, are sub-indices, and these are useful conceptually when the um, elements can be conceived as either substitutes one for another, like it doesn't matter if you have a, a cow or three goats, but in, in either case you've got enough livestock. Um, and it can also be proxies that you have adequacy in a particular dimension, and so there might be multiple proxies um, for those. And so we've constructed sub of this type. You won't be able then to decompose to any variables other than the, the aggregate indicator. Um, but for these sub-indices, it's useful to do the validity tests. So these are the 10 indicators. Um, you'll see this again, so this is just really to give you an introduction. The first domain is uh, about productive resources, and it has two indicators. In the column um, under the title variable, you see the variable names, and aggregation method refers to the um, both, both vectors actually refer in different ways to the cutoff. Um, so the aggregation, if I'm not mistaken, is actually um, that the person has to have achieved adequacy in two. Is that right? Yes, yes, it is. So okay. We have uh, several sub-indicators, but then I'll go through this on data. Right. And each of those several sub-indicators has zero one value the person is ad uh, considered as adequacy in that sub-indicator. And when we aggregate right. all the indicators, we have to have at least two of them where the person is adequacy to be adequacy as in for any as adequacy to put in productive decisions. But I will go through that on my on the department. Right. Okay. Um, and so in each of these, what you'll see is that there's a variable, there's um, an inadequacy cutoff, which is the Z, the vector of Z cutoffs, which identifies a person's empowerment score as being a zero or one, depending on whether they are judged to have an adequate or in a, inadequate level of achievement in each of the 10 um, indicators. So these are the details, and um, the survey questions that give those variables um, are online. And we can also send around or present to you the annexes that have the um, particular questions that are used, um, written out, if you're interested. Um, and the weights I've already gone through. 